Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash Entitled People, where you'll hear ridiculous stories about people who believe the world revolves around them and that nobody else matters. Guys, I hope you're having a great day today, and you know what's up. You're about to hear some super entitled stories, so buckle up because this one is a wild one. I hope you enjoy the stories today, and do hit that subscribe button for future tales. So we're headed out for a family vacation, flying first class for the first time. Our group has seven of the eight seats adjacent to the cockpit, with one random seat amongst us. And boy, did we find a Karen. Right from the get-go, Karen made her presence known. Now, we board with my father-in-law, who's in a wheelchair, to find that for some reason this lady boards the plane along with us. Now, I want to note that at this time, boarding is for passengers who need the extra time to board. Now, it seems like her motivation to do so was to pack not only her overhead compartment with her multitude of carry-on items, but she also needs to use all of mine and half of someone else's too. Okay, fine, whatever, we can deal with it. Now the flight then gets delayed for being short crew, and Karen immediately starts demanding wine before we even leave the ground. As soon as the stewardess tells her no and walks off, she starts complaining to us about how crappy first class is with this airline. Now at this point, I'm thinking, can you just shut the hell up already? Then comes the inevitable, we can just leave without the crew member, right? We don't need them. Now apparently she wasn't paying attention because the missing crew was the frickin' pilot. We were then released back out to the terminal for a bit to stretch, since the delay was so long, and we returned to our seats to find my daughter's seat occupied by Karen's friend, who was flying economy class. After standing around and clearing our throats several times to get their attention, it's obvious that they have no awareness of anyone outside their bubble. Finally, after both myself, my daughter, and my mother-in-law all asked them to clear out, they finally acknowledged that they're in someone else's seat. When we eventually get up in the air, cue Karen slamming glasses of wine. After the third glass, she's drunk as hell because she then dumped the entire fourth glass of wine on my teenage daughter, and did not even acknowledge that she'd done it. There's no sorry, no here's a napkin, she just immediately starts demanding another drink. All the while, her face mask is down while she's drinking, but the second I take mine off to drink some water, this bitch grabs my arm and starts demanding that I put my mask back on because I'm spreading germs. So at this point, I finally tell the stewardess everything, and they stop serving her, but she spends the rest of the trip complaining about how crappy the airline is and trying to talk to my daughter the entire time, who's legitimately worried that this moron is gonna puke on her. Now, I've been fortunate enough to never have encountered anything like this while on a plane. This Karen should be thrown off the plane immediately, while it's in the air, with a parachute, of course. <laughs> we're not heartless, guys, we're not heartless. Now, I live in a three-unit townhome. We're all good friends and share keys with one another. One of them is my best friend who, with my approval, is allowed to enter my house while I'm gone to grab whatever she needs. In return, she cooks me food and shares her alcohol with me on weekends. The only thing is that she has the code to my house alarm. This becomes relevant later. So one day, the entitled neighbor who lives in a different building sees her leaving my house and asks what's up. Now, we're all friendly with one another, so she's familiar with my friend. So my friend tells her that I gave her permission to go into my house anytime she needs. Now, the entitled neighbor thinks that we're friends, just because I'm friendly to her and she texts me to rat out my friend. I tell her it's fine. Now, the entitled neighbor is very obnoxious, but we're all nice to her because you don't want crazy people living across the street. So a week later, the entitled neighbor comes by and asks why I won't give her a key to my house. I make up an excuse that it's a safety thing because I'm the only one with a fire extinguisher, which is also a fact. The only excuse I can think of now is my landlord won't let me. And that seemed to shut her up. I really don't want her in my house. I can only imagine what she'll do in there and her bringing her kids over to trash my stuff. I have really expensive computer equipment. I don't need kids around. So fast forward a month later. She sees me unload a bucket of fireball shots and quickly makes a beeline across the street and asks for some and trying to make friendly conversation. I roll my eyes and struggle with a seal and hand her two. She then says, Thanks babe, I love you. Now whatever, it's not a big deal. Meanwhile, she still messages me like friends and I watch her house from time to time while she's gone. So last week, I'm at my mom's house when I get a phone call from my home security system company asking if I need police. Now, my roommate and my key holder neighbors have my code, and it gives you 60 seconds to punch in the code, so something's up. I rush home, and my front door is wide open with two cops inside. 
I rush inside and see the entitled neighbor standing at the counter and she casually says, Oh, here she is. She lets me in her house all the time. We're best friends. Tell the officer we're friends. Now, at this point, my jaw drops. Apparently, she has the garage door code to my friend's house, where she found my house keys in my friend's house, and she has the audacity to take my stuff when I'm gone, like she's entitled to it. She didn't message me that the alarm was screaming to let me know she wanted something, and didn't even leave when the cops show up. It took the cops 8 minutes to get there, so I have no idea what she was doing with a screaming alarm going off. She broke into two houses like it was no big deal. I demand she leaves, not pressing charges because I don't want a crazy angry neighbor. My city charges you 100 bucks if you have an unregistered alarm system, so I get a fine from the city. I paid the fee and stuck the bill in her doorway. Haven't seen a dime of that yet. She also hasn't asked for my alcohol either since then. Guys, OP is way too kind to not press charges on that woman. She literally broke into two houses and tells police it's okay because we're friends. Haha, <laughs> no, not at that point we aren't. Listen, OP seemed like she didn't even like the woman, so that was the perfect time to be like, um, officer, I've never seen this woman in my life. You need to arrest her right now. But let me know what you guys think. What would you do if you were in OP shoes? This happened a few weekends ago. There's this restaurant that my husband and I want to try, and figured a holiday weekend was the perfect time to go. It's the kind of place you find 28 to 35 year olds sipping craft beer and dropping the f-bomb a lot. A place that serves fancy food and doesn't have a kid's menu. It's not a very kid-friendly environment. And yet, on Sunday nights, 8.30pm, we were seated next to a group of 4 adults and 2 boys, who were 5 and 6, and a baby. 5 minutes after being seated, one of the kids had a tantrum. The kid got bored, so his mom gave him her iPhone. He dropped it, she yelled, and then she and dad starts to fight about how he never disciplines the kid. Fun times. Now, this went on for a while until all four adults at the table gave up parenting and let their kids run loose. Literally. For 30 minutes, these people watched their kids run past other people's tables, crawl under them, knock into patrons, bump chairs, spill drinks, and trip the waitresses. Then one of them knocked into a chair and woke up the sleeping baby, and of course it starts crying. At no point did they tell their kids to behave, to stop it, to sit down, or to calm down. No one took the crying baby outside, no one did a single thing to keep any of the kids quiet, for 30 minutes. At this point, I lost it. The next time the waitress comes around, I quietly told her that the table next to us was essentially ruining our meal, and by the stares they were getting from the other patrons, it wasn't just us who'd had it. She gave me a knowing look, and said she completely understood and that she'd try to move us to another table. A few minutes later, the manager appears at the hell table. He quietly said something that made them all do that innocent, stunned, Who? Me? They were gathering their things when one of the moms starts to mutter under her breath. Her husband told her to leave it, and of course she couldn't. She said, No, I will not leave it. I can't believe they would do this to us. We're paying customers, just like the rest of you people. I'm trying to enjoy a nice meal with my friends. I bet none of you have kids. You don't know what it's like. The nerve of some people. Would you like me to pay for your meals? Would that make up for the inconvenience of my son being a child? So then, this one hero stands up and says, It was me. I complained. You know why? Because I too am a parent. And if my kids behaved like yours did tonight, I would be ashamed of myself. I know better than and have the decency to control my kids and not have them interrupt others during a meal. So before she could say anything, someone at the other table said, We complained. And we too are parents. I watched your son run into our waitress four times while you did nothing. That's not called being a child. That's called being a crappy parent. Of course at that point, I piped up and said, Your son knocked into my chair about a dozen times tonight and tried to crawl under our table. You did nothing while the two of them ran around screaming like banshees for half an hour. I absolutely complained. So about four other tables start to express how they felt with the group before the mom got indignant and walked out. We all applauded, and it was brilliant. Trying to play the victim did not work this time, Karen. I'm terribly sorry. Like, trying to tell others how they don't know because they don't have kids, only to find out that a lot of people do have kids, and they parent better than you. Oof. Oh, how embarrassing. So about 10 months ago, a guy goes down outside of a strip mall store. He has a medical alert bracelet on about a heart condition. Paramedics get called, which arrive quickly, thanks to first responders. They showed up, jumped out, and start getting to work. 
Karen rolls up behind the paramedic's truck and starts screaming that the truck cut her off at the intersection with lights and sirens. She then demands the paramedic look at her as she melts down while he's starting CPR on the victim. The paramedic is ignoring her entirely, telling her to step back and steps to get something from the truck. She then blocks his way and gets moved aside as he goes to the truck. Now, this is where Karen pulls out pepper spray. She hoses the standing paramedic directly in the face, but she's not done there. She sprays the second paramedic on the ground, and just for trifecta, she hoses down the heart attack victim, screaming that he's too young to have a heart attack. Now, at this point, I quickly dart in and took it as my cue to remove her pepper spray and hold on to her with others until police arrive. The others are trying to help with CPR while some try to wash out the eyes of the paramedics. The police arrives and Karen immediately goes into handcuffs and then attempts to bite and kick the police, which results her getting hogtied and her shirt pulled up over her face, at which time she starts screaming assault. But here's the kicker. When police arrest her, she starts with, do you know who I am? So the results are two counts of aggravated assault with a weapon on paramedics, two counts of assault on police, one count of aggravated assault with a weapon on the heart attack victim, which survived, and resisting arrest with violence. She's also being sued by the heart attack victim for $10 million, which she apparently has. Her trial is coming up, and I bought a new suit for it, and my old ass will be there with bells on. Since the entire event is on video from two cameras, it'll be interesting to see what her high-powered legal team is going to cook up, but ultimately, I hope she'll be convicted. She's facing a possible 65 years, but practically will only get about 10 maximum, if any prison time. As a side note, her husband is a bank vice president and refused to make her bail. It took 13 days for her family to bail her out. There must be a good reason that her husband refused her bail. She seems like a great lady. Now guys, I don't know whether or not this story is true because I did try to do a quick Google search, and something like this would definitely be on the news, right? But I did find a news article of a woman pepper spraying paramedics, so it does happen guys, it does happen. Paramedics do get pepper sprayed. When I was a baby, my parents rescued a dog from the animal shelter, and we named him Buddy. Buddy was half German Shepherd, half Golden Retriever. We called him our Golden Shepherd, and he was the perfect family dog. As the years passed, our family grew larger, and Buddy saw each of us as his own puppies. He would let us snuggle with him, use him as a pillow, and I think he thought he was human since he would only walk on the sidewalk, only lay on blankets, and chasing a ball or a stick was absolutely beneath him. What a quirky boy. Now, this story takes place when I was 12 years old, so by our best guess, Buddy was at least 13 years old. He was old, and all the kids in our family knew to give him space and to treat him nicely, just like how you would treat an old man. Now, we had some new neighbors who didn't like us very much. They only had a three-year-old daughter and one indoor cat, so our family of kids and a dog were a bit too loud and dirty for them. They avoided us as much as possible, but occasionally their daughter would be outside playing at the same time we were, and we would invite her to play with us. On one day like this, my sister had Buddy on a leash in the front yard, drawing with sidewalk chalk with her friend. Buddy was just lying in the sunshine next to them. The little girl comes out and asked if she could draw with chalk too, and of course my sister let her, and didn't think anything bad could happen. The girl being three years old draws for a bit, and then runs off and comes back to draw some more. Then runs off again, and my sister doesn't worry about her because she's just being a toddler. After a bit, she tried climbing on Buddy's back like a horse. My sister stopped her, and explained that Buddy's an old man, and that hurts his back. The little girl nods and runs off. So after a little while of everything going fine, the girl runs up again and tries to climb on his back again. My sister again corrected her, explaining that that hurts Buddy, and we don't want to hurt him, so please don't climb on his back. The little girl says, okay, and runs off. So the girl comes back again. This time, she comes back and climbed on Buddy's back a third time. Just as my sister noticed her and starts to say something, Buddy growls. The growl spooked the girl and she lost her balance and fell off and hit her face on the sidewalk. When my sister took her to her parents' house, they were convinced that Buddy bit her. They wouldn't listen to my sister's story, and instead insisted the scrape on the daughter's cheek was a dog bite. Even though it was clearly a wide sidewalk scrape, not teeth marks. Now, Buddy had no history of biting. I ran outside to see Buddy, just sitting there with his head down like he thought he was in trouble. Poor dog wouldn't hurt a fly. In their dramatic to-do, they rushed their daughter to the hospital and got her cheek bandaged up and sought out a military police officer with experience working with attack dogs who told them that once a German Shepherd tastes blood, they will never stop trying to kill that person. 
So the parents came to us that night and demand that we put our dog down because he would try to kill their daughter. My dad was very reasonable and understood their fear, so he said he would talk to the family and get back to them. When he told us they wanted us to put down our dog, we all start crying and hugging Buddy and begging dad not to do it. My dad was a big softy, but he could be fiercely protective of his family. If someone made us cry, it was all over. The next day, he told the neighbors that he believed my sister, and that the dog did not bite their daughter, and that he was old and trying to protect himself from being hurt. They didn't take this well, and from then on, they would call their daughter inside whenever they saw us, with or without the dog. They even tried spreading gossip about us with the other neighbors. Everybody else liked us though, so that didn't go anywhere. So long story short, the mean neighbors moved out, and Buddy lived to the ripe old age of 17. He died after a long battle with cancer on my 16th birthday. So OP does have a picture of the dog right here. The dog looks like such a sweetheart, doesn't he? Is that thing with German Shepherds true though, that when they taste blood they're immediately out to kill? Or did the parents lie about that to get the family to put down their sweet dog? And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled People. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today, and thank you so much for coming to hang out with me and listening to these wacky stories. If you missed the last episode of our slash entitled people, I will link it right here. A mother disowns her daughter for the most ridiculous reason ever. I promise you, it's a crazy story, so check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.